A measurable paradigm shift is occurring in AI, from research papers to patentable inventions. There are currently over 340,000 AI patent families in the world. 200,000 of these have been awarded since 2013. AI patents have overtaken all other types of patents to become the fastest growth area in patents worldwide. I'm Bart Moss St. Clair, and this is The Amateur Academic where we take topics, we turn them into videos to turn you into an amateur academic. This time on the Amateur Academic, we're discussing AI patents with an AI patent attorney, Peter Hare. Welcome, Peter. Hi. So there's a lot of questions we have for this topic, and it's a, it's a very big topic. But my first question is, why should a company patent their AI technology? Patents and other intellectual property rights, like trademarks and copyrights, are assets. Assets have value. A company with intellectual property rights increases their value. This is especially relevant for startups when looking for investors. How much value can a patent add to a company? Patent valuation is very individual. It strongly depends on the invention behind and the ways how to use the patent. For example, you may calculate a kind of replacement value for your patent, which considers the effort to circumvent your patent. Another approach might be to calculate a value based on a capitalized royalty stream. This means based on expected license fees. You've spoken about assets, but what further benefits can you get from patenting? A patent, for example, may justify higher company growth rates in your business case, which results from the protection a patent offers against competitors. Another benefit is that a patent represents a security that can be sold separately if necessary. Banks and investors love securities. It also has a benefit for the founders. The founders may keep a larger share of their company when inviting investors to fund the company as patents represent value. How many patent applications should a company file? This differs from company to company. Startup companies with a strong technological background file on average five to 10 patent applications to secure the key aspects of their technology. When they grow, they permanently secure new technological aspects in, in new patent applications. While small companies limit their patenting strategy to the key aspects of their technology, large companies tend to patent as much as possible. The reason is simple. Patents are assets and protect you against competitors. I guess the most important question is, what exactly is a patent? Good question. First of all, I will tell you what a patent is not. It is not a trademark. A trademark protects the brand of your product. You may use it to protect the brand of your AI product or service. It is not copyright. A copyright protects your or original work from duplication, like the source code of your software. It is also not a registered design. A design protects the appearance of your product. This may also include the graphical user interface of your AI service. Be careful. In the US, the registered design is known as a design patent, which does not protect the technology behind, only the appearance of your product. All these rights are intellectual property rights and valuable when protecting your AI business. But now to patents. A patent, in the US known as utility patent, is the sole right to exclude others from making, using, or selling your invention. In the US, the term invention is quite open, as long as it is more concrete than trying to patent laws of nature, natural phenomena, or abstract ideas. In Europe, an invention requires a technical contribution. This means the invention must contribute to producing a technical effort that serves a technical purpose. This definition is narrower than in the US but there is a tendency to end up with similar results while using different terminology. You spoke of differences between patents in the US and in Europe. Could you perhaps tell us more about the differences between the two? In fact, both the USPTO and the EPO use different terminology, 
but when fulfilling the partially different requirements of the two offices, you might end up with a similar result. According to my personal observations, the EPO tends to maintain higher standards to grant a patent than the USPTO does. For example, the EPO is very restrictive in the examination procedure when amending the patent application. Therefore, more effort needs to be spent to draft a successful patent application than with the USPTO, where you may amend your documents later onwards more easily. Are there any useful guidelines in patenting AI? Indeed, AI inventions require special attention to avoid rejections for the same reasons as for any computer-implemented invention. Many AI inventions are rejected by the USPTO because of being directed to an abstract idea, when the invention only covers the mathematical model, but not the problem solved in the technical implementation of this mathematical model. The EPO acts in a similar way, but names this differently. They classify mathematical models as non-technical subject matter that does not contribute to a technical effect. Therefore, AI patent applications need to be carefully drafted according to USPTO and EPO requirements to reduce the risk of rejections. This is not a theoretical danger. When analyzing the patent portfolio of large companies, which try to patent almost everything, you may expect that about one-third of all patent applications proceed to grant. The success rate is much higher for small companies who carefully select the most promising subject matter. In contrast, for AI patent applications, the average rate of granted patents to filed applications over the last five years is only about 10%. So you see that special care is required to avoid pitfalls in AI patenting. What can you patent in an AI pipeline? In general, you're not limited to a particular AI functionality. You may obtain patents for NLU, NLG, ASR, TTS or whatever else. There are no limits as long as you consider a specific technical implementation that solves the technical problem in a non-obvious way. By sure, your invention must be more than using a known AI SDK and following known implementation guidelines. But even if you improve the mathematical model behind an AI application, the main pitfall is that patents are not granted for an abstract computational model. For example, the EPO considers computational models and algorithms as excluded from patentability, irrespective of whether the model can be trained based on training data. The USPTO rejects such a model as non-patent eligible because of falling under abstract ideas. Nevertheless, a mathematical method may contribute to the technical character of an invention. In order to do so, it must contribute to producing a technical effect that serves a technical purpose. The model must be applied to a field of technology or adapted to a specific technical implementation in which a technical problem is solved in a non-obvious way. In many cases, patent eligible solutions are not patented as the inventors consider them only as small steps. In fact, almost all patentable inventions are small steps and not giant leaps. We build the giant leap from a number of patents, each contributing a small step to the giant leap. Most AI systems aren't really built from scratch, but built from previous work, such as libraries. Can you get a patent for just improving a previous system? In fact, most patents are related to improving an already known system, as a patent usually concerns a small improvement. The EPO applies the so-called problem-solution approach to identify inventions. The improvement must not be obvious for a skilled person when confronted with the technical problem that is solved by the improvement. The USPTO uses different tests, but they all end up with an estimate whether the improvement would be obvious or non-obvious for a skilled person. The invention must be more than an abstract idea or wish list. A patent describes a particular technical solution. It is not a collection of requirements. So please consider the technical implementation. 
An improvement may also contain a mathematical algorithm if applied in a technical system and solving a technical problem. Could you perhaps provide us with a list of do's and don'ts for patenting AI? Do not try to patent a wish list or requirements that your system needs to fulfill. Many patent applications are rejected because of only containing a list of requirements, resulting in an abstract idea excluded from patentability. Please consider that a patent is a reward for an intelligent solution, not for an intelligent problem statement. Have a close look at your technical solution. Talk to your engineers. Did they identify any pitfalls when implementing a particular feature? Any technical problem overcome may contain an invention. The technical solution needs to be non-obvious for the skilled person. There is no patent for cooking according to a recipe, but rather for creating a new recipe or improving an existing recipe. Could you give us some examples of features in AI that are patentable or not patentable? For example, in the field of CV, optical recognition of low-level features might be patentable. The classification of digital images, videos, audio or speech signals based on low-level features are typical technical applications of classification algorithms. Such features are considered as technical and they contribute to inventive step if the implementation is non-obvious for the skilled person. In the field of NLU, text classification based on content might be non-patentable. According to the EPO, it is not a technical issue whether two text documents in respect of their textual content belong to the same class of documents. The reason is that the classification follows rules outside the technical context. For example, a business rule to identify an invoice. If the invention is only in the mathematical algorithm that classifies the document without any further inventive implementation details, no patent can be obtained for such business rules. Please don't give up too early. Text classification can be patentable if the improvement is somewhere else in the processing pipeline, outside the classification algorithm as such. For example, when implementing the algorithm in a system and overcoming a technical problem. These two examples especially apply to the EPO, but you may expect that the USPTO has a similar position. So to summarize these points, how would you best characterize patenting AI? Patenting is a must for AI companies. In order to obtain a patent, focus on the specific technical implementation of your AI solution. Stay away from patenting an abstract idea. Consider both the EPO and USPTO specific requirements when drafting your patent application. Rather think in small steps. Patents protect small steps and many of them form the giant technological leap. Well, I've learned a lot about patenting AI today. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope you at home have learned a lot about patenting AI yourselves here in the Amateur Academic. Keep in mind, you can write us with any questions you might have. And until next time, keep researching, keep digging, and keep trying to be an amateur academic.